For our Unit 1 Stretch and Explore segment, we're going to be looking at colored pencil. Uh, for the assessment, I'm essentially looking at uh, that you've experimented with colored pencil, that you've shown growth with the material, and that you've taken the opportunity to check in and you've made any revisions and you've looked at kind of taking what you've displayed and then looking at a little bit of improvement. And the first section that we're going to look at is blending complementary colors. So looking at those two colors opposite each other on the color wheel, using those together to create a range of saturation to desaturation. Um, so the three pairs you're going to look at are going to be red, green, blue, orange, and violet yellow. Um, when you get started with these, it can be helpful um, to start with almost like a mid pressure so like if you're thinking of like the amount of pressure that you can apply with a pencil um aiming for about like a midway point like 30 to 60 percent um this can be helpful with colored pencil um essentially since colored pencil is a very firm material um what can happen is if you press really hard right away is the colored pencil actually like burnishes on the paper and it creates almost like a seal where you can no longer go back and blend it so instead of starting with really heavy pressure right away i'd recommend starting with like that that mid pressure and then once you have that started then you're going to start to grade your pressure so looking at um, at the very far end with red I'm going to use um, what's like as firm as I usually go with colored pencils and then as I get closer and closer to that middle I'm going to bring it down to like 80% 60% 40% 20% and then not at all and then you're going to repeat the same process with the other color looking at green and then um, kind of same process starting with about that mid pressure getting that base layer and then alternating or gradiating your pressure from one end to the other and um, this is going to allow you to have more control over your blend it's going to allow you to have a smoother transition between those colors whereas if you go in with really firm pressure right away um, sometimes you're going to go too dark right off the bat and it's going to be harder to blend in so um start with that mid mid-range pressure and then you alter from there makes it a lot easier um makes it a lot smoother as well too and then one question i usually get from students is which color to start with first um for most of them it doesn't matter too much as long as you're starting with that base layer at about that midway pressure and then continuing in to build up or gradient your pressure from there it's usually fine um that said the one color exception with that i would say yellow usually always do first as your base layer um it's not really good as an overlap on any of the other colors and it's usually not going to blend in all that well so that would be the one i would suggest and then the next section is going to be looking at color temperature so this is looking a little bit more specifically at individual colors and thinking on the temperature so how warm and how cool the color is um, so for red I'm going to be looking at that base tone of red and then I'm also going to look at where it starts to go to more orange when you're looking at that red orange shade and then red violet where it starts to get more cool um, with these um, a good way to start with them is to start with just that base color so starting with the with this one I'm gonna start just with red um, I'm gonna go all the way across I'm gonna do that base layer again with about that you know like 30 to 60 percent once I have that base layer down then I'm gonna start to go in with my two kind of warm cool tones that I'm gonna mix in so that orange and violet um, with these ones I would say don't go up to full pressure on these since you're mainly focusing just on that kind of red color family um, but you are still going to grady a little bit, I would say, think of instead of going up all the way to like 100% pressure on either end, I'd say go to about like 80 is that top. And then um, usually what's helpful for these ones is to layer in and then go back over with red and then um, essentially go in with very firm pressure so that you really see that gradation within that color family. And then for the remaining sections, you're going to continue with that same process, starting with your base layer, um, going in and alternating or gradiating those shades that you're mixing in, and then going back in with your base color and layering over the top. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I would say avoid um, not doing yellow first. So like with this orange one, I did yellow secondary, and the transition really isn't that noticeable. Um, it's fine with this one, but I would say 
Um, always do that yellow first. It's going to give you a lot more control, um, just since yellow doesn't have a tendency to overlap all that well with the other colors. Um, otherwise, pretty much the same process. Um, can be helpful with these just to consider instead of um, mixing from truly like violet to red, violet to blue, um, you're thinking of just within that color family. So thinking of that very slight transition within violet or within blue. Um, and then this is going to bring us to the back side of the paper. These are going to get into more independent studies. Um, this next one's going to be looking at um, two types of blending. Um, one with using white colored pencil to essentially polish and smooth the shape at the end. The other one is gonna be without. So it's just looking at kind of textural differences you can get while using white as essentially like a blender. Um, with these ones, I would say just focus on like a monochrome color scheme. So with the first one, I'm just doing blue, white, and black. And then with this process, I would say start with your base color you're going to start by like kind of doing a base tone, gradiating your pressure to show that change in value. And then from there, once I feel like I have kind of a good range of value and what I'm seeing, then I'm going to start to go in with my black, um, kind of emphasizing those shadows and then going back in with the white and starting to smooth out and also lighten up some of those really light areas. And then one reminder with us is um, when you go in with the black. Um, I would say try to be fairly minimal at first. Um, the black itself can be very um, overpowering and has a tendency to just wash out your base color. So keep that pressure pretty soft. Um, you're really thinking with monochromes, the kind of base color is going to be the main color you see. The black is just used to incorporate some of that shadow and range. And then for this last section, we're going to be looking at essentially a practice drawing. There's going to be three references to choose from on the left side of the paper. Um, I'll also put handouts on your table that you can reference for the color. And then I'll also put this up on the board too, so you can see a larger, more detailed photo as well. Um, but with these ones, you are going to look at essentially kind of mirroring what you see. Um, they don't have to be perfect replicas. Um, the main thing I want to see is that you can identify kind of your highlights, your midtones, your shadows, that you can identify kind of those transitions in color you're seeing within the reference, and that you can mirror that with blending and shading. So um, if the subject isn't 100% accurate to the reference, that's fine. I would rather have you focus on the overall blending, shading, and showing me that you understand and you're seeing those transitions in color, shadow, and light in the reference itself. And then the process is pretty similar to what we did for those smaller exercises. Um, you're going to be thinking of starting with like the base colors that you see. And then once you have those base colors, then you're going to start to look at gradiating between those different shades, gradiating between value that you see. Um, and then from there, starting to look at incorporating your shadows, your details, and then building those up to get that greater saturation, that greater value, and that greater range. Um, usually with colored pencil drawings, when you initially start off, they usually look look um, pretty soft and um, almost kind of flat where all the value is very very similar. Um, that's fine, but just kind of keep in mind you're going to start to build your pressure up, you're going to build your value up, you're going to build up those colors, and you're going to start to look at more of those transitions. So um, as you go through, I would say just going to start with base color, then start to go into your gradation, then build in your shadows, and then um, detailing is usually going to be incorporated in that last little bit. But um, with this process, you're going to be looking at just quick practice, um, kind of thinking of showing, demonstrating your understanding, your exploration with the material itself. And then as you finish up the sheet, um, like I mentioned at the beginning with the rubric, I'm looking that you are exploring, you are showing your knowledge of the material. Um, with this, I'm going to have you do a quick check-in with me. Um, I'll point out any areas that might need just a quick revision. You'll go through, revise that, and then turn it back in. Um, if you want that score of a 10 or 8.5, you need to check in with me. So make sure that you are doing that. They're pretty quick and pretty painless. So um, that'll be it. Uh, let me know if you have questions, but you are good to go.